In the late 1990s, Firestone had to recall 14.4 million tyres. 14.4 million ATX, ATX2s and Wilderness tyres were recalled because the tread peeled off, losing pressure and causing the vehicles to roll over. Leading to over 200 deaths and countless injuries as a result of what happened. After that, Congress mandated a new law, it was called the Tread Act, which meant that like, as of 2007, any manufactured cars, they all had to have some kind of tyre pressure monitoring system, or in other words, TPMS. Except motorcycles. However, if installed on a motorcycle, they had to comply with the standards expected on that they would find on normal cars. This video is to explain the pros and cons of TPMS. Cue the intro. Motorcycles are exempt from the mandatory installation of the TPMS for two main reasons. Typically, motorcycle riders are a lot more conscientious of their tyre pressures and uh, check their pressures more regularly and we were pretty much immune from a lot of the aggravations that would come with having to get up and do that with four tyres and only needed to do it with two. The other reason, if a tyre got a slow puncture or started deflating, it would be a lot more obvious to a motorcyclist than it would be to a car driver. There are two types of TPMSs being used today direct and indirect. Direct monitoring systems are simply like the units inside the wheels that actually measures the pressure inside the tyres and then relays that to the ECU on the bike which is then displayed on your clock. Indirect approaches it slightly differently. What it does is it measures the rotation of each tyre. Uh, compared to what the tyre should be, it measures what it is and if there's any like either wear on the tyre or if there's the pressure drops then obviously the rotation is going to be slightly less and so it measures the difference and then tells you or alerts you that you've got a problem with your tyre pressures. Most bikes that have them use the indirect method which explains why the reading on a dash is blank until you reach a certain speed. They typically have a 5-10 to 10 year battery life, mostly by turning on only when the wheel is rotating and even then they turn off periodically to save battery life. If the tread's worn down you're going to have the same effect as if the tyre pressure goes down. TPMSs have been in existence since like the late, well since the mid 80s I think. They were mostly used in like high-end very expensive cars as a, more of a gimmick than anything but as the technology got cheaper and as, as like different methods of measuring the tyre pressures got like easier to make or manufacture they started becoming more mainstream in vehicles throughout the 90s now you still had to be like in the high-end vehicle to be able to have a TPMS but it was more and more like available and on top of that you also had extra like aftermarket manufacturers make their own versions of uh, TPMS which you could just sort of like screw into the valve stem of your tyres. I don't know about them to be honest with you. Like I said, you know, if anything other than just a simple, anything that sort of like, that plugs into the valve stem on your bike could be easily broken and lo lose your pressure that way. And you don't want that. So what's good about them? The good things about TPMSs on motorcycles is one that it does keep you aware of your tyre pressures and so you know you, you can monitor it from there. It really saves on fuel economy. According to the government 10% under inflation on any tyre can equal 1% of loss in fuel economy. The US government estimates that to be approximately 2 billion gallons of fuel lost every year. What's bad about them? The bad thing about it or well, the bad thing about TPMS is TPMSs are normally gauged under circumstances where you're at sea level and there's an ambient temperature, say around about 65 or 70 degrees. Or if you live in a mountain in the cold, your pressure reading is going to become inaccurate as a result. The other bad thing is they need a counterweight to account for the weight of them on the one on the valve stem. So you need extra weights on the other side of the wheel or you need weights on the opposite side of the wheel to account for that. So this means you've just got more stuff that needs to be stuck on the tyre or on the wheel to be able to counteract the weight of these things. They can give you false alerts, making you have to stop and check the tyres when you don't need to. And if you have OCD, they will be an absolute nightmare if you can't get both the front and rear tyre at the same pressure. And even if you do get them at the same pressure, you ride it for a few minutes, one of them's going to say like 
41, the other one's going to say 42. Now, if you're OCD, that's going to totally screw with your brain. So what's ugly about them? TMMSs have to send out a transmission to your ECU. And part of that, so that the ECU doesn't get confused between your TPMS and the TPMS of a passing car or another motorcycle, is that it has to register your VIN number or some information pertaining to your bike, which means that it's susceptible to hacking. Not that they could do any major damage, but who knows? They're subject to corrosion, which means that like their TPMSs are actually the weak link in whatever they do to keep air inside your tyres and not let it leak out. So if you're running around on tyres that are getting flatter and flatter, you're not going to know it until you need to like break or something and you end up hurtled over the road. Or your bike starts shimmering and shaking and wobbling and you know something's seriously wrong that way. But it could have taken you like 50 or 100 miles to have gotten to that point. It's like a frog slowly boiling in like a bowl of water. He don't know it until he's dead. The OEM TPMSs are notoriously expensive. The batteries are normally part of like the integrated system and can't be replaced. So if your battery starts going out on your TPMS, then you're going to have to replace the entire unit. And that's not cheap. Dealerships will charge anywhere between $100 to $200 to replace them per wheel. Are they worth it? I think they are because they give me peace of mind when I'm rolling, at least to alert me if something's wrong. But we'll see if they're going to be worth it. If anything happens to them, will they start giving me really bad wrong information? I mean, right now they're telling me that they need some air in them. They're showing what, 37 pounds? Yep. Yeah. I'm showing 37 pounds. I should be at 42. But the technology is here and it's here to stay. They might make it smaller, lighter, cheaper, and more accurate. Technology's getting to a point now where they'll be able to account for just about every single variable to give you an accurate idea as to what your tire pressures are going to be. Right now, it's just an indicator to say whether something's working or not working. I don't know if you might have noticed, but I got rid of that little revolving Cockney Biker logo up on the, uh, the top right corner of the screen. Not that I was getting complaints about it, but it was starting to get annoying for me as well if I watch my videos and I'm seeing this thing revolving around in the corner. What I've done now is I've replaced the subscribe deal down on the bottom right side of the screen. I've replaced that with the Cockney logo. Hope you like it. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you're new to this channel, consider subscribing for some content that I normally throw out at least once a week. Thank you so much for staying tuned on this video. I really do appreciate it. And as always, laters.